This is the Stangolini Ferrari Berlinetta Super Sport. <laughs> You know, me and Pat got a lot of stories from the old days, from the punk rock scene in Hollywood. You know, this would be fun. How much do you know about Pat? Ah, uh, let's see. <laughs> hey, real quick. Is, is there anything that you're interested in learning about Lee before we walk in here? Um. Yeah, pretty much everything. <laughs> we both were part of this scene early on, this punk rock thing in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. He at one point joins the Germs. Crawling out from underneath the bar kind of reputation. <laughs> Welcome to Death or Glory. Today we're sitting down with two LA punk rock icons, Pat Smear from the Germs and Lee Ming from Fear. I didn't know if you had ever played together or, you know, in, and something that came to mind that I didn't think of until I was driving here is you guys were both obviously in decline of Western civilization. Right. And 30 years later, you're in another yeah. documentary. See that full circle thing going on? Total. Uh, full circle, which uh, was yeah. a whole thing that Darby was the full circle. Yeah. And... Right. But um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. We didn't play at the same. No, I don't remember. Did you play at an actual club, or did you have to play at a soundstage? We played at Marchmont Hall for for, the, for Brendan. No, no, for the uh, for the decline. That was at the Culver City Arena, where the main oh. footage where Penelope shot oh. the main footage for our show. I remember. I was at that game. And it was it was packed. Yeah. It was a great big room. And yeah. I remember saying to somebody, hey, motherfucker, don't bite so hard next time I come. And, yeah. you know, we're trying to make friends. <laughs> I would say to him, uh, you know, it's fucking 1980. It's a fucking matter, man. You can't afford a haircut. Stuff like that. Yeah. Just endearing myself to people yeah. in, in that sort Making of... Making friends. Interpersonal. <laughs> Making friends, that's right. <laughs> Ours wasn't, um, they wouldn't, at this point, they wouldn't let, no club would let us play. Right. There's no club would let us play no. either. Not the whiskey and not the Starwood, which is more, most important. But even worse for us was even our friends who were promoters wouldn't have us, so <laughs> we couldn't even do like the Red and Halls place. So Penelope had to actually rent a soundstage for us to play in. Penelope Vegas used show. our audience shots for, for all the bands. Really? Yeah. Because so whenever the crowd was too big, it's your shot. That's right. <laughs> and that show was packed. That was jam-packed at Culver City Arena. Wow. It was a big 2,000-person hall or something like that, and it was jam. So she used our audience shots for... And we also played in Redondo Beach at some club where the bags were being filmed that night, and Penelope was going to use their footage for that and some of, and some of our stuff from that night. But mostly it was Culver City Arena and one gig in Redondo Beach. Those were the two performances that she used for us in the deployment. I don't remember the name of that Redondo Club. Yeah. How do you feel or were you aware of, because you said, you know, Fear was definitely more aggressive, at least to my perception, and had a more aggressive, like the slam dancing, and for lack of a better term, a more brutal audience than, say, the Germs did. Is that true, or am I... No, perceiving I think it wrong. Were, uh, uh, I think our audiences were pretty similar. Yeah, pretty similar. Ours might have been a little. Maybe more, more Hollywood oriented, or maybe a little, little closer to the art scene or something. When we first started scene. playing, they wouldn't let us play. They didn't think of us as a band. They, they booked us in uh, arts. They thought of us as, as performers because we were so bad. <laughs> that they, they really consider us a band. So we would play with 
opening for performance artists. And it wasn't until we got a little better that we started getting booked as a band in places that bands played. So we, I think we brought some of those. <laughs> I think there was interest on the Hollywood art scene in this scene, whatever this was going to be. They, uh, that group of people liked it. Steve Savage. It, it was great to see an actual music scene happening in Hollywood. You know, after it had only been industry bullshit for years and years. It had to be, uh, all you ever heard in the radio were the Doobie Brothers and things that sounded classic industry, safe. And no bad words, nothing. And finally somebody said to me, man, you gotta go look at this punk rock scene. I was down there at Brendan Mullins' place the other night. It's called The Mask, you gotta go look at this. Some guy was in there with a Led Zeppelin shirt and looked like they were gonna kill him and beat the shit out of him. He was running out of there screaming, you gotta take a look at this thing. So I go down to The Mask and the first things I see with this awful band from Pasadena, man, that can't fucking play or do anything. Then another band comes up, they're even worse. And I'm thinking, oh, this is for shit, man. I can't fucking handle this. I'm into John Coltrane and Miles Davis. I can't fucking handle this, man. So I go back and give it one more shot. I go back the next night and I see Arthur J in the Gold Cup, Gold Cups, Black Randy in the Metro Squad, and uh, the Gears and the Controllers and who the fuck ever else. I can't even remember. I think, oh, okay, this is different. Black Randy comes up to the microphone and goes, I want to bother you to make out again! The whole joint just started beating the <laughs> shit out of us. Yeah, man, I found my home, man. <laughs> those bands, like you were asking before, all those bands I mean, were so different. Like what we call punk rock. Nobody would call this stuff punk rock now. Like Black Randy comes out now, no, or Arthur J especially. No one's going to call that punk rock. No one's going to call Devo punk rock now. Or, or so many of these bands that to us, the go goes. It was like, yeah, these are punk rock bands. And then it became so cookie cutter began to fall into the idea of uh, new wave versus punk. Like the that punk too. was the hardcore, the thing the record companies wouldn't have, yeah. the, the thing that Sid Vicious pisses on her boss's wife at A&M Records. So <laughs> you know, by Monday morning, nobody called punk rock is going to get signed by any wow. major labels anywhere. I heard that Sid ground a broken wine glass into Paul McCartney's guitar player's eye or something, oh, some horrific okay. story like that. And uh, so, you know, the, there's these stories being told, and if you show up with anything having to do with the word punk attached to your name, the record companies don't want to talk to you. They don't want to listen to your shit. They throw it away immediately. So, and it's taken all these years for that to, stigma to go away and for people to finally listen. I wanted them to listen to us. We brought people in to see us. They were singing along with our songs to every word. I thought that was the last step before Clive Davis shows up with this big contract and signs <laughs> me up. <laughs> but the record labels weren't into it. And it's taken all this time for them to forget about that show yeah. and listen to what's being presented to them and judge on the basis of that, not on some thing that's hearsay. Um, we weren't starting bands to, to be indie and and uh, we weren't trying to, to have some sort of, like whatever was going on, whatever was happening later with like, no, it's cool, you want to be in there. We were doing that. We all wanted to be signed. We all actually wanted people to like and hear our bands. We became indie because we had, because nobody else would do it. So your friend would say, I'll figure out how to put out a record and I'll start a record label or whatever like that. But it, it became so like, yeah, indie DIY. I was like, no, that's not what we were doing. We were trying, we just failed, so we had to do something else. And we had to use indie labels because those are the only ones that would get involved with it. The only ones to take the chance, yeah. with the best of money. Thank you. Leaving. My pleasure. Pat Smear. A pleasure. Sit down and talking to us.